The 26th Stockton Asparagus Festival, which wrapped up Sunday, may prove to be one of its strongest yet. The nonprofit event is run by several thousand volunteers whose participation raises money for the more than 120 organizations that they represent. In some cases, that money keeps the doors open. We um, are trying to build a memorial wall at Weber Point for victims of violent crimes. A lot of them are unsolved. Um, just donate our time so that we can get paid to pay for our business liability insurance. The festival centers around eating asparagus, one of the signature crops in the Central Valley. Volunteer workers prepare the asparagus, they mix the batter, and they coat the spears literally one at a time. And then they head into the deep fryer, and the end result? selling over 30,000 pounds of asparagus spears over the three-day event. Fantastic. Fantastic. While managing an all-volunteer event can be a bit like herding cats, with 26 years of experience, the Stock and Asparagus Festival seems to be running smoothly. Things are going fantastic. The crowd's been very strong. The weather has been amazing. Uh, we're selling a lot of product. A lot of food is going out the window, so we're very happy. Not everything at the festival is nonprofit. There are many for-profit businesses that see the festival as a way to make sales and increase product visibility, even if it does mean traveling 2,395 miles, give or take, from Perrysburg, Ohio. Because we're in stores in this area and we want to promote better sales in the stores in this area. So we're giving people free samples so they can see how good our dressing is and they'll go to the store and buy it. And you know, a lot of the people, that's what we need is a, a wide range of people. And if we can get them to stop and try it, we got them hooked. And where does your garlic come from? We get it from Christopher Ranch in California. It's all grown in California. At so Christopher ship Ranch. to Toledo. Yep, they ship truckloads and then we pickle the garlic because you have to do something with garlic. You either have to heat it or you have to pickle it so it doesn't create botulism. So we pickle it and then it's mixed in with the rest of the ingredients and comes out to this wonderful salad dressing. And it comes all the way back to California? Yes, okay. it comes all the way back to California. But at the heart of it all, of course, is asparagus, an industry that California once dominated but which in recent years has faced stiff competition from other countries. Uh, well, there's a myriad of issues affecting our farmers, anything from uh, pests in the field to markets and uh, the price that we, they are receiving in the marketplace. There's a tremendous amount of, ex of imports into our country of asparagus. So right now asparagus is available 12 months out of the year. And so the farmers are having a very hard time competing against the imported products from both Mexico and Peru. The industry has gone through a major shift over the past decade. Just about a decade ago, there was about 30,000 acres of asparagus produced in the, in the state. Now we're down to about 12,500. I think we've plateaued at that level. That's at a level where we can still supply our markets and not oversupply it considering all of the imports that come in. So I believe that the next 10 years will be a lot more stable than the last 10 years. And growers are concerned about the newest round of political pressures that could reshape, literally, California's water supply systems. The most critical part of the water issue is the quality that we have in the Delta right now is deteriorating. Uh, so much of this water is being sucked off and going down south that is causing our, our water quality to deteriorate over time. And I think the, uh, the damage that we've received, probably more damage in the last three or four years during that little drought spell that is officially over now. Uh, but that has created uh, large holes in my grape fields and my asparagus has also suffered. And the, and the thing that's a big issue is also what's kept happening with this peripheral canal situation. Uh, in my opinion, it is basically a um, technique to get more water, better water from the Sacramento River through the Delta and into the pumps that go and bring it down south and bypassing, basically trying to bypass the Delta. What would happen to the Delta if that were to come about? 
my personal opinion is that the delta would continue to deteriorate to the point where we couldn't farm it anymore. I mean, that's kind of like the, the ultimate conclusion. And I think what would happen is you'd lose many acres to uh, salt damage. It would turn into basically a salt marsh. For festival goers, things like brand awareness and water supply could well have been invisible. Because what's better than a nice day along the waterfront enjoying another spear of fried asparagus. For CentralValleyBusinessTimes.com, I'm Doug Caldwell.